All right, so today we're gonna learn how to make your own glazing medium. I'll tell you about this little mixture a little later. We're gonna need a glass jar and a stir. Any kind of stir will do. We're also gonna use retouch varnish. I know I showed you the back of it. Very important, we need some cobalt dryer. And uh, this mixture right here, I'm actually, I love using um, stand oil, but this is a special stand oil. It has lead in it. That's why I'm wearing gloves. You gotta be very careful with it. Um, you don't always have to wear gloves, but just make sure that you don't have any cuts when using this. I put it in hot water to kind of loosen it up a little bit. Uh, it's a few years old, so I wanted to make sure that I could pour it easily into the new jar. So I only have a little bit of it left, um, and I figured I might as well just use it for glazing medium. Now, stand oil is very different than regular uh, linseed oil. It is linseed oil, but it has been heated up to a very high temperature, so it will thicken it. Now, this one contains lead particles, which help the pigment, uh, it helps the pigment acquire more lighting so it could reflect and make it look more, um, like it has more depth. All right, so the combination here is about one part of each. So now we're gonna use the retouch varnish. You can use Damar, but with the Damar, you can't really work on top of um, the layers because it's more of a permanent varnish. So I like to use the retouch varnish, and when I feel completely sure that I'm done with the painting, then I will do a layer of Damar varnish. So I, as you can see here, I'm going to finish the whole bottle. I only have a little bit left, so it's a little bit more than one part uh, retouch varnish. And now I forgot to put this medium out um, onto, the, onto the screen, but we're also going to use some terpenoid. Terpenoid is a turpentine substitute. It's orderless, but it is still toxic, so you still got to be, be careful with it. Again, don't have any cuts in your hands, and if you do, make sure you use gloves. So again, I'm going to use one part of the terpenoid to two parts of the other two mediums I have. There we go. The more you use, the more liquidy it is and so you gotta be careful that it doesn't run too much so we're gonna add the last ingredient which is very important it's called cobalt dryer medium now this is a dryer agent so you're only gonna use a little bit you see into your mixture now we will mix I sped it up because it did take me a few minutes to mix this. You want to make sure that all of the ingredients are very well incorporated. And it'll to start looking like turmeric. I take turmeric uh, juice in the morning. <laughs> so this totally looks like that. A little ASMR for you. All right. Okay, so now let me show you the difference between uh, paint on. This is an opaque painting, so you could see it still has depth, but this one looks like it has even more depth. So that's what we're going to try to do with my painting. This painting here is five feet tall and five feet and seven feet wide so i sped it up about eight times so this is about three minutes of me working on this painting but it actually took me about 25 or so minutes to 
uh, get it all covered with my first layer. I like to work wet into wet and add different colors. Now there's different varieties of glazing. One, you could do one color over the whole thing, then let that dry, then do another color. Like if you were to do yellow and then put red on top of the yellow, the dried yellow layer, you would create an orange and so forth. Um, I didn't want to do that because it takes a long time and I kind of have a deadline with this painting. So I'm kind of working wet into wet. So I'm adding the different colors where I need them on the canvas. I'm varying the colors from brownish red to yellowish red and red for her dress. Now, when you're, use, when you're using colors to glaze, you want to make sure your colors are transparent. What do I mean by transparent? The easiest way to tell what a transparent color is, um, is the darkness. So a black is very transparent. White is completely opaque and is not transparent at all. So the yellow I'm using is called Indian yellow. It is a very dark, transparent yellow. The red I'm using is called alizarin crimson. So again, it's very transparent. And I'm also using Van Dyke brown. It is my favorite color. Well, it's my favorite brown. <laughs> it, it's almost like a purpley brown. It has like a plum color, like a plum tint to the brown. And it's very versatile. So as you can see here, um, some areas are left a little more orangey, some areas are a little bit more yellow, but because I have an underpainting that created the depth of my painting with, you know, lights and darks, I don't have to worry about uh, making some areas lighter and darker. I'm just adding the transparent washes, which will help create the depth later on, which actually they already look like they have the depth, right? Now this painting should be done or should be dried within two or three hours, but I'm going to work on it on Tuesday. Today is Monday, September 25th. As you can see, this is the uh, first layer finished and now it's going to dry kind of shiny because of the Demar uh, retouch varnish and we'll see you tomorrow.